want us to go into the word of God. And the topic of the message today. Love. Praise be to Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Wafunzi, I am here today. It's a family matter. It's a family matter. It's a family matter. That is very serious. And family matters for families to produce people in society that will do great things. There's something that they need. Love. Let's read Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 and 27. And I'm reading in the King James Version. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fall of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and every and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, in the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. Father, we thank you for the word that has been read. We pray that, O oh God, let it find life, a place in our lives that we may be able to grow in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Now the Bible says where we've read, for God said, let us make men in our image in our own likeness. Let men have dominion. Now this is God. After he has called things to be. He says. Now let us make men. Now this man that we make. Must be like us. Men must take the image of God. Man, God wanted man to be like him. Now, we need to understand. But now, if man is to be like God, then who is God? What image should man take if man is to be like God? What is man supposed to do if man is to be like God? He says, I want man to have dominion over everything. I want man to have authority. Let men be like me on earth. Let us read 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 and 8. In the King James, it reads, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Now, we have been taught and we understand that our God is a consuming fire. And we know that that which is born of fire is fire. Now, listen to this. The word of God says, we must love one another for love is of God and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. Now, if you do not love, you do not know God. Why? Because God is love. Now, let's go back to Genesis. God says, let us make men in our own image. Now, let's go to John, to 1 John. 
Because God is love. Let's go to Genesis. Let us make men in our own image. Let us make men in our own likeness. But who is God? God is love. So let us make men and what men should be, he must be what I am as God. So if God is love, men must be love. Let us make men in our own image. I want this man to dominate, to have dominion. Let me tell you, we cannot dominate God's way without love. We cannot rule the way God wants us to rule without love. Because God, his rulership is based on love because he is love. Let us make men in our image. Let me tell you, this is what happened in, when, when man was created. That's Adam. He's in the Garden of Eden. He's, he's there. And then God says, it is not good for this man to be alone. And then he made for him a helper that was suitable for him out of his own rib. Now God makes Eve. Now, when Adam wakes up and he sees Eve, nobody tells Adam that you must love this woman. Nobody says to Adam, you must love her. No. When he wakes up and he looks at her because he is created in the image of God and love lives in him. He looks at her. Love begins to speak. Let me tell you. When he looked at her, he started to speak. He said, this one what he is the bone of my bones. He a, this is the flesh of my flesh. He said, I'll call her a woman. Listen, Listen, what you call love at first sight right now is something else. I don't know. But the, there's one man that knows that. And that was Adam. Because when he looked, I said, wow. Why? He was in the image of God. He was not polluted. There was no disturbance between him and the relationship that he had with God. So when he looked at her, love started to manifest. Now, this is what God says. This is what the word of God says. If you do not love, you do not know God. Let me tell you, knowing God is not about how much you pray or how long you pray, but love. Because that is who God is. Because you might be somebody that prays. You go on for hours praying. But when you come out of prayer and you open the door and the first person you see is Monseni that you hate, then everything goes blank. Why? Because there's no love. Now there are people they are so proud of how long they fast. But there are people that they cannot look at while they are fasting. If you do not love, you do not know God. 
Because God is love. Now, in Matthew 22, verse 36 to 38, now this is the Pharisee, an expert in law goes to Jesus and in verse 36 Matthew 22 he says teacher which is the greatest commandment in the law Jesus replied love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind this is the first and the greatest commandment now listen to this this man says to Jesus I want you to tell me which commandment is the greatest and Jesus says love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul with all your mind listen the greatest commandment is that you must love love. <laughs> and the greatest commandment is that you must love God and God is love. In other words, the greatest commandment is that you must be connected with the one that you were created in his image. So you were created in the image of God. Now, the greatest commandment is you must have that relationship, that companionship with the one from whom you come. Now you come from God and God wants you to be like him. The first commandment is do not be fake. Be real. And how do you become real? You must love. Love. Now, he goes on to say we are Kubega at him. In verse 39. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. And all the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. Now let me tell you this. It is impossible to love somebody if you don't love yourself. Now Jesus says remain in God. The first thing, love God. Do everything that God wants you to do, that God created you to do. Do not lose your position with God. That is the greatest commandment. Love him with everything, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. In other words, think like him, act like him, do like him, speak like him, love him. Now he says, now let me bring you the second. You wanted only one, let me give you the second one. You must love your neighbor as you love yourself. Now you must understand this. The only way you can know how to love the next person, you must love yourself. And I'm not saying you must be, you must have pride. I'm saying you must love yourself. You see, the people today that are abused, people that are going through a lot of things sometimes. They can't get out of it because they don't value themselves. I always say there's one thing that I know. I don't need anybody to tell me that I look good. 
I might not look good in your eyes, but when I look at myself, I see this handsome man that was created by God. So what you say does not matter. I love this man. Let me tell you something. Jesus says, love your neighbor. Now, how do you love your neighbor as you love yourself? Hey. You must love yourself. Take care of yourself. Can I tell you something? Young people, let me tell you, when you go through things, when people do things to you, and you get money, don't go and buy poison. Go and buy ice cream. Let me tell you, when they tell you that you are useless, don't buy a rope and hang yourself. Go to McDonald's and sit down and say, this woman, this young woman is about to have a good time on her own. Love yourself. When they say you will never amount to nothing. As a brother. Wake up in the morning. Iron your pants. Iron your shirt. Polish your shoes. And take a bath. A long one for that matter. And when you get out of there. You take your Bible. And you say I'm going to church. I'm a gentleman. I look good. It does not matter. What? You say, I'm a child of God. Love yourself. You're crying that nobody has ever told you that they love you. Have you ever told yourself that you love yourself? I want to give you an, an, an assignment today. Go home. Stand in front of the mirror. And say, this young woman is beautiful. This is, listen, loving yourself is a commandment. Jesus says, the second one, love your neighbor as you love yourself. In other words, the love that you give to the next person must be the reflection. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, people, you see, we have young men and young women that are waiting for marriage so that they can feel, experience love. If you do not know love, you will not understand love even in marriage. This young woman will be confused. But what, did, what is it that this man wants? And she doesn't understand. You know why? It's because he does not understand. He doesn't love himself. So even when he is loved, he does not understand. Love yourself first. And then, Love others. Now, when you start to love others, you'll understand this. You do not love them because you love them because they are children of God. It's not because of what they have. You see, I love myself when my account is negative. I love myself when there's no food. I love myself when I'm wearing a suit that is three years old. So you will be able to love the next person whether they have money or not. I love you. Do you have a big house or not? I love you. You are educated or not? I love you. I don't love what you have. I love you. That is why when I see you I need to look and, and I want to have I want you to have the best in life. 
You see, if I want to have a big house, I want you to have a big house. I want you to drive a big car. Can I tell you that it's not a sin to be rich? It's not a sin to be rich. As long as it's done according to the will of God, it's a good thing. You see, there's a problem that I want us to have. I want us to have a problem of parking. See, everybody must have their own big car. But that does not. That is not a measure of love. We need to grow to a point where we love people. Love is beautiful. You see, when you love, when you love, you will enjoy life. Let me tell you, there are people that will wrong you. Now, if you want to enjoy life, you love those that wrong you. But if you want to be bitter, hate the people that wrong you. If you hate those that have wronged you, if you have, your heart is a prison, a lot of people arrested there. Let me tell you, you will suffer because you will sit down to have a good meal and this person passes. And then the appetite goes. And remember, in a restaurant, you do not pay for appetite, you pay for the food. So even if you don't have appetite, you still have to pay. Just because somebody passed. Love will make us to live Christianity and enjoy Christianity. You see, witchcraft operates on hatred and jealousy. You cannot wish bad on somebody that you love. In the house of the Lord, this must be a place of warmth. When somebody comes from wherever they're coming from and life has dealt with them so bad. When they come into the house of God, they must find love. There is somebody that does not know what it is to be embraced. Now just imagine if somebody who comes from a family where everybody just do whatever they want to do without caring for anyone. And they come to church and they meet somebody who does not care. Church is supposed to care. Children of God are supposed to care. How can we enjoy? How can it be so easy for a child of God 
to have 50 pairs of shoes. When there's a child who is walking to school barefoot. And you can see every day. The child passes there every day walking barefoot. It's cold. And you look at it. And you say, God, I thank you for the shoes that you gave to my children. Love will make your prayer to be heard because God is love. Let me tell you, there is nobody that can tell me that they, they were never helped by anyone in their life. You might be having a lot of money, but let me tell you, somebody did something for you to be there. Can I tell you, so that you can stop boasting, somebody prayed for you to receive salvation. You see, there are people out there we are laughing at them. We, do, we say whatever we want to say to them because they are drunk. They are, they are, we call them what? Nyaupe boys. And we say all that we want to say. Let me tell you, you when we're supposed to be a nyaupe boy if it was not for the prayer of somebody that you do not know. Now let me say today, let me give you an assignment. Whenever you see somebody and you see their life going somehow, even if you don't have anything to give to them, pray for them. Love them. Love them. Let me tell you, God, love that one that you reject. God cares for that one. You know that one in your street that you do not even want to see. God loves that one. You know sometimes Christians they are closing doors closing doors. There are people who want to receive Christ. But they are holding the doors. They are closed. No entry. Me and my children are here. So for you, no entry. You know how we are closing doors? It's because when they come to you, you look the other way. When they come to church, they sit next to you. Within a minute, you look for another chair and you move. Because they are not dressed like you. They don't smell like you. Christians are closing doors. That person did not even remain for the second service because of the treatment they received in the church. And there was an altar call for that person. That edict. They came in in the church. And then Asha, when they were shaking hands, they saw this one that is dirty. And they looked the other way so that he can pass. And that person might be dirty. But he's not stupid. He saw it. And he said, never again. And Look, to, look at your neighbor. 
and say how many have you killed With your own self-righteousness. The Bible says. Self-righteousness. It's like filthy rags. Before the Lord. You are acting super holy. How many have you killed? How many have decided and they said no matter what happens I will never go to church because of you. Young people when you were sending happy Mother's Day messages to your mentors and your pastors did you start with your own mother? You start with your own mother. First Corinthians 13. There is no Christianity without love. Let me tell you. We can be coming to church every day. Singing and dancing. Doing all sorts of things that we know. That they must be done at church. But without love. That's nothing. First Corinthians 13, I read from verse 1 in the NIV. If I speak in tongues of men and of angels, or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clinging symbol. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. Listen. Without love, the Bible says, you can speak of tongues, speak in tongues of angels, speak in tongues, prophesy, have all the knowledge, without love, you are nothing. Without Love, you are like a symbol that is just making noise. Where's the drama? Go to your drums. Go to your drums. Now, the Bible says, without love, I want you to play those symbols. Play them. Don't 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 play them like you you're playing a song. Just just hit them. Now you're being smart. Hit those things. All of Chalazine. them. Just beat them. Without love. That's what the word of God says you are. You are like just symbols that are making noise. You're not even making good noise. Music. It's just noise. Hit those things. Now when you are prophesying, praying in tongues for hours and hours without love,
that is what you are doing. If I stand here and preach without love, that's what I do. Love is God himself. Without love. Without love. Without love. There's no Christianity. Without God. There's no Christianity. Therefore without love. There's no Christianity. You see people. We have elevated ourselves. To another level of wickedness. Let me tell you what's wickedness. Wickedness is when you see somebody who is hungry and you have means to feed that person and you open a scripture for them. Wickedness is when you see somebody that has a need that you can address and instead of addressing that need, you tell them I will pray for you. That is wickedness. That is witchcraft. Listen. Listen. There are times that I don't, I will not hear your verse because I am hungry. I need bread. Give me bread so that I can pay attention to what you are saying. If you give me a verse when I'm hungry, you are bewitching me. You are a witch. That is wickedness. That is not Christianity. The Bible says he will say, I was hungry. And you did not feed me. And Let me tell you something. There are times where when you want to find biggest witches, go to church. Because they will come and testify. And you think they are glorifying God. But they are telling you that my son passed your faith. I wish I could preach something that you like. But I preach what God wants me to say. Listen, the Bible says the apostles, they stayed together everything that they own. It belonged to all of them. But today, go to church, you will see. That is why They want to push when they want to push you away. They'll tell you, I love you with the love of the Lord. And they smile and go. A child can run and fall next to a mother. And the mother looks for an usher. Because this child is so dirty, I can't pick her up. I'm sorry I'm saying the things that you do. Something must change. Even if you can speak in tongues of angels, if you do not have love, you are nothing. If I give all that I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast but do not have love, 
I gain nothing. There are people who will give you food. And while you are eating, they say, ah, no, if it was not for me, this woman would have died. If, if you can give everything that you have to the poor so that you can boost. You call me to your house. You give me shoes. But now wherever I go, people are telling me about the shoes that I was given. You were not giving me shoes. You were creating some sort of a CV for yourself. Oh, my sister, why didn't you come to church? No, I, I, I didn't make it. I had to do something my mother asked me to do. Oh, I thought you didn't come because of, 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 of you don't have a skirt. I was going to say, but I gave you yesterday. Without love, that is nothing. It's useless. Without love, keep your own things. Wear all of them. If you're going to give them away so that you can boast, keep them. Keep them. Keep them. when you are in trouble. You, you need somebody and they tell you you don't pray. Eh? You, you don't have faith. Shut up. You're sounding bad. Do you think you have what you have because of your prayer? Do you think you are where you are because you prayed? If that's what you think, let me tell you, that's foolishness. There is somebody that you do not know that loved you so much that they spent time on their knees for you. Love is patient. Love is patient. Men! My daughter. Love is patient. I was in a train one day with a friend of mine coming from work. And he said to me, What it mean? I you know there are a lot of things, these things that women do. Uh, I mean, the problem is that I get angry quick. I said, don't get married. Not yet. You still need to deal with that. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. Love does not envy. You know, there are people that will say to you, Oh, you, you bought a Mercedes Benz. Ah, it's very nice. But I like a BMW. Love does not envy. You appreciate and you are happy when somebody receives something. Love is happy when somebody receives something. Love is kind. How many times were you 
begged to come to church but somebody didn't give up you were even cursing them you said, they said come let's go into the house of the Lord you want me to go to his will you want me to go and get your demons I'm not going they come again and said, no, let's, let's go. Come. Say, no, 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 no. no. Uh, you want those boys and girls to push me? I'm not going. Come. Let's go. Until you say, okay, I'll go for your sake. And when you came, you received your salvation. If that person was not kind enough to come, if that person was not patient enough to come to you every day when you were swearing at them, where would you be? It does not boast. It does not boast. I lose that is your tongue. Let me, go, let me not go into the boasting part because it does not boast. Love does not boast. It is not proud. Listen, I'm not making these things up. It's in the word of God. If you are following me, you would know I'm in verse 4 now. It does not dishonor others. It Do we still have those things in, in families where pastors are, res are respected more than husbands? You know, there are people who their, their husband does not know that you can bake until the pastor says, I'm visiting. And the pastor is even shocked that the husband is shocked that my wife can do this. Love does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. There's this thing, I don't know what you call it in English. What is it in English? What is it? Milliped. When it's still small, you know when it's still small? When it's big, when you touch it, 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 rolls, it rolls. But when it's still small, when you touch it, there are people you don't touch them. You don't touch them. A little thing. Hey, love is not easily angered. You don't touch them. Handle with care. This side up. Fragile. It keeps no record of wrongs. Hey! It keeps no record of wrongs. You know that day when you are wearing a red tie and, hey, It keeps no record of It happened. On the 15th of June 2014, I left you. You did it again on the 7th of July 2016. I left you. And that day, when you were, you were coming from Jobe, you were wearing a red, a red shoe and you were wearing a red tie. That day, I left you. Ah, today, it keeps no record of wrongs. There are people who knows all the wrongs that were done to them. They don't remember any good. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. 
I love this. Love never fails. As much as God never fails, love never fails. I want to read this last part of this verse. And when I read it, I said, Lord, if only we knew. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. Listen, every other thing will pass. There will be times where we don't need the prophecy. But love will remain. Love will remain. Because God is love. I want you to stand on your feet. Children of God, we need to stop the boasting, the envy. We need to stop that and love each other.